Uh, I'm sure you've had enough of this contradictory talk, which appears to be slightly changing, but does something that hopefully keeps it stable. And that stability is you. 100% pure you is stable. Not your mind, not your body. These are changing aspects in life. These are moving entities. And that's the only fact, that the only thing that is stable in this world, meaning not of a sane mind or of a whole idea of mind, but the one that exists as you has no boundaries, has no changing aspects, has no hot and cold elements, man and woman elements. That what you are is discoverable for yourself because you are already that, that as Papaji says. And this life is just about unfolding and discovering the whole story about you. Mind story is a is a chapter. Ego story another chapter. Birth story another chapter. Death story a chapter. But the whole story beyond this body, including this body, and every aspect of you, soul, spirit, billions of souls pass you through your body every moment. You're unaware. But in your deep, profound, conscious awareness, you are. But you can only get to that awareness through this apparent enlightenment, apparent awakening, which is just another aspect, another movement, another transition, another transcending of your life unfolding in front of your very eyes. So I'm going to tell you the very simplest and quickest way to understand these worlds and to discover your true self. But it's impossible until you you are 100% with the first step. And the first step can only be, these steps can only be described through personal experience and through this revelation of this, what you would call God, shouting abuse to this one to say, hey, enough, you've came far enough, you know, I want you to go forward now. Okay, so there has to be this absolute first step, complete, genuine doubt about all of this, including yourself. There has to be absolute, genuine doubt from your inner, everywhere, about what you have been told, what is going on, what the future lies, all about heaven, all about God, all about relationships, attachments, it's all, everything, doubt, out, doubt about me. Who am I? You don't have to ask this question, repeat this question. You have to find the doubt. And through the doubt is a second step. Through the doubt comes a question. The question is relevant to you. What? I can only say to you, what are you doubting? What is it that you're doubting? What is it that you're genuinely doubting about life, about yourself, about your existence, about your um, appearance here as whatever you think you are? And the question will continue to bother you. It will continue to bother your mind. It will continue to antagonize you. And then there were for, for me, there was a form of depression, a form of depression. What is going on? Why won't no one answer this question? Where is this God that everyone speaks about? Where is the people that are supposed to be supporting? Where are the counselors, the psychologists? Where are all these people, these saints, these gurus that are supposed to be helping me to understand the truth that I know exists but I can't find it. I can't find it. And this question is most uncomfortable 
uncomfortable. It's not a beautiful transition. It's not a meditative, oh, let's go and get awakening enlightenment. For it's This question is what I would call now, after reading so many books since my uh, this enlightened appearance, is the dark night of the soul. This is this is beyond depression. Depression has arisen because there's no answer, and answer is more antagonizing than accepting life as it is. Just accepting that you'll never know. You'll just have to die, not knowing. And this is where your your real self comes in, your true gladiator self. This is where your upbringing comes in, your conditioning comes in to support you, to say, well, I'm not going to go anywhere till I get this answer. And then for me, the answer was, was revealed. It's not for me to share the answer. You, you've, there's so many videos, oh, a thousand videos of, of um, slight uncoverings, but more, ma mainly about the wisdom that is revealed through this answer, about what this is all about beyond science, religion and everything, but it's of no use to you. It's actually of no use to me because in this body, I am a person, I'm a human being, and I do the same things as everyone else. I breathe, I think, I act, I experience, and I have tastes of all these states that are now very mouldy, states of love, states of joy, states of bliss, states of suffering, states of pain, states of anger, states of happiness. These are all mouldy states now that just seem to kind of try and, and work its way into this this head that is now vacant. There's a sign up saying vacancies, but no, not open for business. I think that was a great quote, quote from Muji that suddenly appeared, not open for business. So the answer comes through depression and for me an anger an anger an anger to look in the mirror and say I don't know who you are but you are fake you're not the genuine one that I am looking at myself you're not the genuine one that I am and the answer is not revealed through the the, the, the whole answer is not revealed through the anger. The anger leads to a kind of oh, a rejoicing, a, a revelation, an emptiness, a, 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 dis a dissolution of ego. It's, it's frightened. It leaves the scene. It goes. It hides. And you feel it's all over. I'm awake. I am that genuine thing. But there's not a conclusion to the answer. So the answer itself is given through the opposite of being angry and depressed. The state of surrendering, giving up. <laughs> I don't need any more. I don't want any more. I've got enough, I'm free. And everything that comes, no, look, look, look at this, look at this, look at this. There, there is light, there is emptiness, there is this, uh, the abyss that is this void. No, no, I don't need that. I give up. No, I, I don't want it. I don't want anything. I, I don't need it. I don't. Here's God. No, no, thanks God. No, no, you go, go. Consciousness. Oh, oh transcendental consciousness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bhagavad Gita. Oh, I'm reading Bhagavad Gita. And I think, what the hell am I reading this for? No, 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 no. Bible. No, 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 no. Zen, Upanishads, Vedanta, no, 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 nothing, <laughs> no, I just giggle, giggle, no, 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 thank you, thank you, I'm fine, I'm fine, leave me, leave me. A surrendering is not a surrendering to say, I'm not participating anymore, I give up. It's a surrendering with, with, with gratitude, with, with, with so much, ah, oh, thank you, thank you, oh, thank you, but no thank you, thank you, but no thank you, thank you, no thank you, thank you, no thank you, thank you. 
No, thank you, thank you. It's just a gibbering. You become that gibbering fool that's surrendering. And through this gibbering, all these things are revealed. And you don't realize that your mind is, is, is taking all this information. It is taking all this. Oh, wow, look at this. Look at this. And the external, in the internal, that true you, you're saying, no, 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 I don't need all this. I don't need it. I didn't need it before. I didn't need the person. I didn't need the body. I didn't need everything. And now I don't need anything that's coming now from this mind, anything that's coming from this consciousness, anything that's coming from this God, anything that's coming from st this states of joy, states of overwhelming bliss, this such a ananda. No, no, I don't. No, surrender. I give up. No, you take it. Take it. It's not mine. until the surrendering itself stops through this visitation of God, this visitation of this colossal voice that you've had hard heard of before. So that's it, you see. A genuine, there has to be a genuine doubt. There has to be, and doubt leads to questions. Questions and doubt come hand in hand, do they? Yeah. And the question leads to kind of depression. Because there's no answer. There's no answer coming. Why is I? Why? What? What about me? What's so? What's so special about all these and that? And then this depression and answer leads to us this kind of anger, and the anger leads to this, for 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 me a, a, a complete annihilation of ego. It's back now. You know, it returns. It's here. I don't hang on to it, you see. I don't hang on to the identity and the names. I don't hang on to the mouldy states of happiness and joy. It's fine. The, these things come. They go. You're still surrendering deep inside. You're still saying, no, no, thank you, thank you, no, thank you. Here's a million pounds. Okay, yeah, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. No. In the external world, people think you're stupid, you're foolish, you're ignorant, you're, 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 you're mad. You're, you're not playing the game. You're not in the system, you're not part of society. You should be put up in a cave in the Himalayas. You know? Okay, yeah, th thank you, no thank you. <laughs> so that's it, you see, that's the whole story in t 10 minutes, you know. That's the way it was for me. But now what I want to say to you is this, that you, you have that potential. As a human being, let's look at you as a human being. As a human being, you're on a roller coaster. Birth is a roller coaster, life is a roller coaster, and death will also be a roller coaster. You won't be the same person that dies that is here, is here now. You're changing your personage every every day, every month, every week, every every day. Your body's changing. Every day your your mind is changing. Every day your experiences are changing. Every day you don't seem to recognize it because you're in a routine. You're in that daily routine, and and. You look at back at your life, and if you were able to look back at your life, that's what memory is for, is to say, wow, I'm not the same person I was when I was a child. I'm not the same person I was when I was a teenager. I'm not the same person as I was last week. Because I have some sort of changes in the life. And that's human life. That's it. You Suffering will come. Get onto the roller coaster of suffering. Get onto the roller coaster of joy. Enjoy it. Enjoy suffering. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to change. It's going to move away. It's going to cease to exist for a period of time. It may come back again. But the fluctuating thing about humanity is you're coming and going. Mind is coming and going. Your body is coming and going. Life is coming and going. And all through all these comings and goings, that stability, that stable you is holding you together. And you call yourself consciousness, but you are beyond consciousness. Consciousness is all that exists, but you are beyond it. The only thing that is beyond consciousness is you. Forget about God. Forget about Brahman Absolute. You are the only thing that is beyond consciousness. You take on consciousness. You invite all these souls into your body every moment. And you can you can get rid of these souls in any minute by putting a rope around your neck or something and saying, yeah, okay, you're finished souls. And what happens when I, when, when that when the body transcends? All the world goes. All the souls go. All the... In, all the things that you have been inviting into your life leave with you. The world goes, the trees go, the clouds go. There's no you, so there's no world. There's no earth, there's no universe. There's no more of this fluctuating states. But you're still stable. And everything is okay. In this seeing, in this enlightenment, in this ultimate state that all these sages speak so eloquently about, that many have experienced but choose to just stay quiet, keep quiet. 
the, what, the one thing you establish is your immortality, your infinite infinity. It matters not about what happens when this body transcends. It's out of your hands as a human, as a mind. But you're taking it truly into your hands because you cannot go anywhere. Ramana Maharshi says these words on his deathbed and it's these words that make absolute sense to an enlightened one. When he's dying in his last breaths, his disciples shout, one of the disciples shouts up, Master, Master, please don't leave us. And Ramana whispers back, where can I go? Where can I go? What is he talking about? You can find that out through your genuine doubt. I hope this makes sense to you. I hope you have a, a wonderful, wonderful um, experience because whatever happens, you're going to experience enlightenment. You may already have done and, and it's just been so subtle that you've, you're moving on. And if you have, you won't be on this site now. You won't be on YouTube at all. Because a real enlightened one should not be sitting speaking to the world. It should be ignoring the world, but participating in the world. It's great to share, you see. That's what Christ said, it's great to share, you see. I'm not sharing it to an audience in a satsang hall. I'm sharing it to myself in this screen. If you happen to be witnessing this, then it may be fortune for you, but it may be miserable for you. you whatever state you're in right now, the experience will, 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 will portray what is happening in your life. Whatever happens in your life is going to happen. Whatever happens to every other human being that you think you're not participating, you're not part of, will happen to you. That's absolutely guaranteed because you have the power. Yeah, in that stability, you have the power to create your own world, not your own mind. The mind is exempt. The mind is that rogue thing that keeps you from seeing and being your original self so that you can participate in this game. I hope you find that this game is worthwhile on your last breath on this body because my game has been the most extremely, extremely diverse game where if you was to write down every moment of every minute of every day of every, of, of every week of every month of every year in the life it would be 20,000 times bigger than the Bible but it means nothing it means nothing to you it means nothing to you my life that's the unique individuality and even though we're speaking in a non-dual mind non-duality is all that I know now non-duality is all that exists non-duality is that there is only one thing happening this body appears to be part of it it appears to be circulating with it it appears to be in it it does not it cannot get out of it so when it goes non-duality means it's going to take it all with them and it is the name of God for me it is all it is whole. It is in all inclusive. Everything that exists in this universe and beyond is it. And I cannot be exempt from it. Look at the name I and it. I starts with an I, ends with a T. I is it. As it. Not whole it. Maybe, but part of it. So everything is okay, life goes on, roller coaster continues. Are you in the front seat? Are you in the back seat? Are you in the middle? Eh, hell of a hell of does not matter not. The hell with awakening, the hell with enlightenment, the hell with states, the hell with joy, the hell with the roller coaster, the hell with the thingy, because beyond hell is you and you are heaven. Namaste. Om.